Welcome to Crimson Guitars. Welcome to my tiny workshop at home. Uh, COVID-19, etc. I hope you're all staying safe and at home and uh, doing all of that stuff that is absolutely required. Um, so yes, keep safe. Burn it. Ha <laughs> ha, yay! Is it wrong that I'm having a total blast? I, I'm I'm so happy. I've uh, I've only had this property for less than a year now, and other things came before building a workshop. And in fact, this isn't even the final workshop. I I do have plans for a larger one just off there. Um, but I'm in this tiny space, and it's taking me right back to when I filmed my first few video series. Uh, working from home is actually pretty amazing. I fully expect to be interrupted by a child suit though. Anyway, I am taking this kit guitar. It's a kit instrument. It's made by Crimson Guitars, uh, so it's of course fantastic, but I'm gonna convert it into something a little bit more interesting. Cyberpunk 2077 is a very, very cool, I hope, uh, game that's coming out soon and uh, yeah. I love the imagery. So, yeah. On with the build. Carving. I'm doing some carving. I've just remembered I don't have my Japanese saw rasp here. I need to, I need to get one on order. Uh, Crimson is still currently open for shipping. Shipping, shipments, orders, all of that sort of stuff. Um, yes, it's all still happening. Uh, this is uh, one of the older versions of the fret end dressing file. And it's not suitable. I have files. Some. Hmm. Fret leveling bin. This is suitable. Once you put facets into something, once you've got regular geometric shapes going on, our modern eyes have become used to seeing them and we spot irregularities that we don't actually necessarily know we've spotted and it looks wrong and off. So it's, it's very important that you get these sorts of things <sighs> exactly right. Uh, now this is probably going to be well, it's a post-apocalyptic kind of a world, so it's going to be somewhat distressed uh, and damaged, etc. in the end. But we do need to, we do need to do this right. So, onwards. Found another file. This is good to get in that corner. Hi, how's it going? Uh, you can see that I'm using this hand at the back of the instrument to support both the guitar but also actually hold the file as I'm going. It's, It's like mountain climbing. I've got as many points of contact on the tool and the work as humanly possible while I'm doing it. Well, uh, I'm trying to keep this nice and flat. Nice. Almost, you've got a little bit of a curve there. Go. 
Yeah, I'm getting that. So we've got a nice hard line there. This joint is a little bit less pronounced because it's much more subtle. Uh, I am probably going to actually cut in uh, and sort of create a fake chamfer to, to make it look like it's three separate panels that have actually been bent. Uh, I'm going to leave that for now though because I'm not 100% certain. Uh, next up I need to carve the, the front exhaust port. This is a this is a nuclear powered guitar. Yeah, I'm I'm happy with that actually. Yeah. So what are that? I'm not just gonna sham for that. I'm gonna have a complex shape where essentially uh, it's a I can't, I can't describe what I'm going to do. It's going to be a complex shape. I need some sharp chisels and uh, I haven't actually sharpened these for a while. So I'm using Shapton stones. Uh, this time I've been experimenting with the scary sharp system for, for a while and I am a fan. I am definitely a fan, but that is back at Crimson. So absolutely essential to have a perfectly flat uh, back of the chisel and then, uh, and then I'm going to work on the uh, on that. Now I tend to do this by hand and just gauge that. Uh, there is an easier option though and that is one of these. Uh, this is a honing guide. Uh, you can get these from vintagetoolshop.com I'm just matching this to the bevel that was on there before. Let's see where we are. A bit far back. That's the one. Yeah. There we go. So you can see that this was originally sharpened on a uh, rotary machine. So I'm hitting it at both sides now. Getting there. Okay, look at that. Can you see? You can't really see. Okay, we've got going all the way over. Uh, this is 2000 grit. I didn't start very coarse because I didn't really need to. But let's uh, let's move on to the 8000. A little bit of water, and it's important to do both sides. Almost perfect. Okay, so this is looking very nice and shiny and shiny and pretty much razor sharp. I am going to, where's my screwdriver? There's my screwdriver. One final thing to do. The leather strop is just fantastic. This is uh, auto sole. Chrome polish. Yep, perfect. Okay, I'm back. I got distracted by <laughs> life. Uh, I have now sharpened, uh, I've got two or three different sizes of these now and uh, 
I think I have internalized the shape that I'm planning on doing. But this is one of those things where it's gonna happen as it happens. Well, let's get on with it. <laughs> There's nothing for it but to start cutting and see where we end up. So, so let's do it. That there is the problem. At the moment, that's the inlay. What it actually needs to be is that's the inlay. There we go. And that line, that line is a continuation. It's a bevel, make the guitar more comfortable, but the bevel goes all the way around to there. Okay, fine, something was, it's been bugging me. And that was it. <laughs> I think this is the point of no return. So essentially this is a very complex shape. This bevel here is gonna continue all the way along that line to there, flop, like that. Hmm, I just don't know how I'm going to do this. Okay, so at this point, a lot of you are shouting at me for pointing the chisel at myself. Technically, I might be, but there's also a whole hell of a lot of material in between me and the chisel. Um, and I'm also hammering it very gently, um, which gives you a lot more control. It's, yeah, doing what it is. Uh, the one thing I don't like about the Triton chisels is it's mainly meant for people who do heavy duty sort of more timber framing, carpentry work. Um, and my, I don't want to hit it with, with that because that would damage my carver's mallet. Um, but anyway, very solid, that's for sure. All right, nothing for it. Isotunes, use the code CRIMSON10 to get a pair for yourself at 10% off, and you too can have a blast while smacking a hammer against a chisel and making a huge noise and not really hearing it because you're listening to... What podcast am I listening to at the moment? Here we go. I am currently listening to How I Built This, NPR. Here we go. <sighs> Goodbye. Okay, so that is part way there. We're not correct yet. We want 
a rectangular port in here. So that's going to have to flat and go in. This is going to have to be a bevel, which is steeper. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing here. It, it's going to be... Because that shape there is the... Okay. We can go like that. Because that line is specified by that line there. So that's absolutely central. But here I can carve. So I want a hard bevel In the maple going down, it's going to be a little bit thicker than that, I assume, because of the thickness at the top. Uh, and we want a sort of cool shaped air. It's not even an exhaust port. It's, it's, this is to, to blow air over our rear wing. Um, <laughs> damn it. Ah, oh, this is so fun. Well, let's, let's see then. So, that's going to be going flat, and that's going... So I'm going to carve to that line, not touch that bevel, and then I'll bevel that bevel down to wherever it ends up being, and that will specify the angle. I'm, I'm part way there. I'm, I'm fairly happy with this. There's that strange shape I just couldn't describe. Now what we need is some sort of, some sort of vent there. I'm thinking, I'm thinking I'm 
thinking something there. Because that looks better. And basically, scratch those sandals. Those don't work. It's... Uh, now, now that we've done this, you can see how offline that looks. Now, it's not. It's, it's bang on the center line. But it just looks totally wrong. So, well, back to the drawing board. But then again, you know, going back to the drawing board, that's pretty much, well, it's, it's the fun bit. I, I enjoy making stuff. I enjoy uh, yeah, covering my floor and sawdust, etc. But originating an idea that's going to be fun and interesting to build, that is as much a part of the build as anything else. I think it's just these ones. It does look weird. I do want to do. So. I'll just take the line that I've already got. Which is that. Attention. Cabinet scrapers are, without a doubt, one of the best tools. As long as you have sharpened it, and it's an easy process, check out, I've done videos about it in the past. Um, it's something you forget about until you need it, and then when you need it, you need it, and you don't want to bother to sharpen it. <sighs> anyway, Zen and the art of guitar maintenance. It, that doesn't work in the slightest. Okay. Um, Back to this, back to this problem. Mm -hmm. I had thought about fashioning an aluminium piece with a, an actual vent built into it, so a physical 3D sort of vent that popped out. <clears throat> but uh, it's also in the area where your arm would be, and I don't want that. I don't look cool. It was all help, but no. There's these LED strips on the insides of the jacket. I'm going to go with that, I think. Let's have a look. Hmm. I'm sure. So we could just keep on going now. I 
think that's it. So does that look weird? Because we've got a different shape there. I'm, I'm going to ruminate on this for a little while. What do you think? Um, I often find that it, it, if you step back and have a look at these things uh, in a different aspect ratio, as it were, um, <laughs> I think I've just figured it out. So the, the, what's looking a little bit strange to me is we've got all of these geometric shapes and straight lines and all that jazz, but this line here, which in that orientation is perfectly straight, looks great like that. But at a slight angle, we've got the fantastically well done by those chaps at Crimson Guitars uh, carve on this top. And that then makes the line look no longer straight. Oh, I love it from that angle. Just had an idea. So that's what we're looking at at this stage. The guitar really is starting to feel as I want it to. And you can see how that straight line goes from being straight to being a bit weird. But what I'm thinking, perhaps, is, so those are holes in the top through which we've got LEDs. This is an aluminium plate. I'm wondering about possibly having on this plate holes that either coincide or the opposite. So for example, that there would be a hole, that there would be a hole. I've confused matters by colouring in that bit. But there would be a hole cut into an aluminium plate that is then uh, bolted on for some reason. I mean, it's absolutely fine to have a piece of aluminium that's just bolted on just for the look of the thing. But we're going to say that's where our nuclear power is hidden and you need an access hatch. I'm going to leave this for a little while to, to let the, the design percolate somewhat. <sighs> I, have, I have a blade. I went to vintagetoolshop.com and picked up a saw. And I'm going to cut this guitar in half, so, well, let's have some fun. So big. All right. I mean, this is a point of no return of note. Let's hope I can cut perpendicular the whole way. <laughs> this is going to be somewhat tedious. Okay, my back is broken. I need to put this at a workable height, but I have a cut. It's going through. It seems to be going straight. This is going to be cool. But not as cool as you. Okay. Would you look at that? Uh, this is my... This is my son's makeshift stool for wood turning. Uh, I need... I need to clamp this down. These Triton quick clamps are amazing. They, they just... You can clamp any thickness down, and which is just, quite frankly, black magic. I'm just changing the tension. The one that's on the bench is in the way of 
where I want to be planting this. And it's infuriating, and I've lost my saw. I've lost my saw. I've lost my saw. I've lost my saw. That's not my saw. That's not my saw. There's my saw. Found my saw. Whew. Okay. That's a bit better. This sucks. Uh, I've broken two blades so far and I am three inches in. This is gonna look pretty cool though. I think it's moving forward. I'm not 100% certain. It must be this sawdust slowly, slowly accumulating. muscles in my hand and my arm that I've never used before in my life. <sighs> okay, at this point, why am I wearing that? I am half building guitars and half helping my wife build a potting table outside. Uh, I have now broken one, two, three, four, four blades and I have a finite supply of blades. So what I am doing here is I'm taking what was a fairly coarse blade, i.e. Uh, I would say, well, that's probably 14 TPI, something like that. Maybe a little bit less. Uh, and I am cutting out two out of every three teeth and thus making this into a a very skip tooth um, blade. And essentially, what this means is I'm still gonna break it, unfortunately, but uh, it clears the sawdust, sawdust a lot faster and will uh, cut much easier through the, I, I assume, 60 millimeter thick guitar body. I mean, this is Sapili and Maple we're talking about here. So I'm hoping this means that it's gonna break a little bit less. So you can see where I've taken pieces off and I'm just holding it in these parallel draw pliers and basically using the, the side of the pliers as a stop for the file and I'm cutting out two teeth at a time. There we go, fantastic. Okay, much, much coarser and should work much better. Okay, so, well, let's draw a line. So we have gone through one, two, three. We've gone through three so far. And uh, let's see how far we get with the skip tooth one. This is an interesting experiment. What do we have? I'm not cutting at all. Ha! There we go. There was a piece of blade stuck in. It's cutting much, much faster as well. <laughs> um, so what happened there is it slipped out of the bottom bit of this saw and released and then I smacked it into the top and it broke. I got a quarter of an inch. It's 
so I guess I'm going to have to make another skip tooth blade. Back to the file. Poop. This job doesn't take too long, to be honest. Yep, okay. Another line. Okay, so come on. Wait, I want you to go backwards. Ah, there we go. Okay. So what I'm going to do is go in from that end and cut down to there and that should work, I hope. Now. Okay, so we went through three blades to there, four Number four was there, number five was to there, number six was to there, so those didn't really work very well. And that's number seven so far. Wow. We're chopping. Whew. There you go, that should do it. There's that. And I just need to make the line go further on down. So. All right. Back to the cutting. I, I think I'm gonna have a blister on my thumb. But hey, art is worth it. Cutting into the wrong cut. Gosh darn it. Can you tell I just want to go and have my dinner now? All right, so the design just changed. <sighs> Nobody will notice. <laughs> poopy, poopy, poop. There we go. So, we'll just we'll just deal with that later. <sighs> Concentrate then. How many of you noticed that? Let me know in the comments below. Oh, there we go. I'm calling that a day for now. I think it is the next day. And uh, so what, what actually happened, I am embarrassed to say, is uh, I got, during the last blade change, I, because I was tightening these things, I tightened this little bit off far too much and snapped the screw without telling you, and I apologize for omitting this. And uh, essentially that blade that I broke there on the very last run was the last blade that I could actually use yesterday because I'd essentially broken my saw. Uh, I have now gone and found a replacement bit and, uh, and I'm fine. I can go again. Um, I just was sort of consumed with with guilt for not actually showing you what a fool I had been. Anyway, it is there. This is we're coming to the end of this video, and uh, 
Yeah. I have some epoxy on order. Hopefully that arrives. Blade in, gently. Gosh, this hurts. Okay, we are now at, so that was number seven, that was number eight, that was number nine. I'm actually on blade number 10 right now, and we're getting there. We're getting there. Holding it like this is actually, feels like it's keeping it more stable and straight, i.e. perpendicular. That's a bloody good glue joint, that is. This is a way to test the quality of a guitar builder, isn't it? <laughs> okay, that hurts. Oh no. So I changed blades. Oh, that sucks. I changed blades halfway um, at this point. And instead of cutting square, like we've got everywhere else, we've got a horrible lump there. So this cut isn't very nice. That's gonna require some, some fixing. That's a bummer. From the front, it looks nice and good. From the back. Less so, although not so bad. Yeah, okay. I can fix that. Somebody broke my guitar. I think this is really cool. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. Click like and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, most importantly, well, let me know what you think of the guitar. There will be more next week. <laughs>